Another Supreme Court justice is under scrutiny. A new report from ProPublica claims Samuel Alito accepted a lavish vacation from a conservative billionaire with frequent business before the high court. The report comes amid calls to reform the court's ethics. Scott McFarland has the latest. Good morning. Tuesday's report says Justice Samuel Alito accepted a luxury fishing trip from Republican mega donor Paul Singer, but didn't recuse himself years later when cases connected to Singer's business came here before the high court. Even before this reporting published, Alito was mounting a response. The report says Justice Samuel Alito did not report gifts on annual financial disclosure forms, including a private flight to Alaska and other amenities provided by billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Singer during a fishing trip in 2008. The report details that in July of that year, they stayed at the King Salmon Lodge and were served multi-course meals of Alaskan king crab legs or Kobe filet. They also enjoyed wine that cost $1,000 a bottle. According to ProPublica, Singer's Manhattan-based hedge fund was involved in at least 10 cases brought before the Supreme Court, many of them high-stakes business cases. Those cases were heard after that fishing trip in 2008, with one decision in 2014 when the high court voted 7-1 to in Singer's favor. And Justice Alito did not recuse himself from any of them. In an op-ed published hours before ProPublica's report, Justice Alito denied what he dubbed charges made against him. In reference to the ride on that private plane, Alito said that Singer allowed me to occupy what would have otherwise been an unoccupied seat and that he stayed in a modest one-room unit. Alito wrote that he followed what I understood to be standard practice by excluding the flight from his financial report. Alito is the latest justice to respond to claims of undisclosed gifts and luxury travel. Earlier this spring, Democrats called on Justice Clarence Thomas to step down after ProPublica reported he'd accepted decades of luxury travel from a donor. It's important to note the Judicial Conference just recently required justices to disclose travel accommodations to social events. Vlad, Anne-Marie. All right, Scott, thank you very much. For more on this, let's bring in one of the two reporters who published this story, Josh Kaplan. He reported on this story with Justin Elliott. Josh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So explain to us a bit more about uh, who billionaire Paul Singer is and his connection to Justice Alito. Right. So Paul Singer is a hedge fund billionaire and one of the largest donors in the country to Republican candidates and causes. Um, and he also has repeatedly had business before the Supreme Court. And uh, we found that uh, Singer took a luxury fishing trip with Sam Alito to Alaska and not only joined him on the trip, but also flew him there on a private jet. Uh, we're told that if Alito had chartered the plane himself, it could have cost easily more than $100,000. Um, okay, so I know that we're not going to do your reporting justice because ProPublica always does really good research, and there's levels to this, yes. as they say, Lot right? It's not yeah. as simple as a straight line from point A to point B. Um, but that being said, let us talk about the kinds of cases that came before the court that were connected, maybe not directly, but connected to Singer. You know, there's in particular, we're talking about a case with Argentina that comes before the court over and over again, and they don't take it up until they do. Mm. Right. So Singer's hedge fund is kind of modeled off. It's best known for taking investments that can make them a lot of money, but might require a bruising legal fight. And after this trip, his hedge fund came before the court at least 10 times. Um, so many of these are from this decade long battle that this hedge fund was having with the nation in Argentina. About 20 years ago, Argentina was in a devastating economic crisis. And for Singer, this created an opportunity. He bought the country's debt at a deep, steep discount and then went to the ends of the earth trying to get them to pay him back in full. Um, and so throughout this really brutal litigation, both sides kept appealing to the Supreme Court. And in 2014, uh, the Supreme Court uh, agreed to intervene. Um, and Alito did not recuse himself, and he ruled with the majority in Singer's favor. Uh, Singer's hedge fund ultimately uh, made $2.4 billion from its Argentina gambit. Yeah, and as you know, uh, Justice Alito 
So, so, so people understand, and they saw this a little bit in Scott McFarland's report for CBS News, but, but you and Justin sent uh, the justice uh, a series of questions uh, to confirm what you had already uh, reported on, and you were getting ready to publish the piece. And he then, in an attempt to, I guess, preempt your story, put out an op-ed on uh, in the Wall Street Journal op uh, editorial pages. Um, and one of the things that he says, and I get that why this is an important story and why what you and Justin are, are reporting on is an important uh, for the American people is these justices have an enormous power over the lives of ordinary Americans. Mm -hmm. And at one point in the op-ed that Justice Alito writes, he says that the seat on the private jet would have gone unoccupied. Like, just logically think about yeah. it for one second. If there's a first class seat and you're in economy on a commercial airline, can you say to the flight attendant, well, you know, yeah. no one's sitting in that seat. What's the big deal, yeah. right? Um, so, so this is why your reporting is so important. And so you, just break down for us what happened. You sent these questions to Alito and then you didn't hear anything back. And the first word that you got of his response was from the Wall Street Journal. Actually, the first word we got from his response was the Supreme Court's head spokesperson telling us he wasn't going to respond to our questions. So we were eager to hear his perspective. Um, and then a few hours later, there was this uh, op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, which was a bit of a surprise, but we're um, glad to hear from him in any forum. Um, and he, what he said essentially is that, you know, one, he didn't have to recuse himself uh, from the cases. He said he wasn't even aware that you know, Singer's hedge fund was connected to Singer and that he didn't really know Singer that well, actually. Uh, and he also said he didn't have to disclose this. He said his interpretation of the rules where he doesn't have to disclose private jet flights uh, is, you know, basically was a common interpretation amongst the Supreme Court justices as he understood it, which it's worth noting here that we talked to a lot of ethics law experts. Uh, they all said that private jet flights clearly have to be disclosed by law. But I think like what this underscores here is the lack of transparency and oversight mm. at the Supreme Court. Um, there are very few restrictions on what uh, gifts justices can accept, which is a stark contrast from other branches of government. You know, those are rules meant to prevent conflicts of interest. And then when a potential conflict of interest arises, and it's up, you know, it's time for a justice to potentially recuse themselves, the only person who decides that is the justice themselves. So you just brought up the point that I that, that there's two things that I got out of your reporting, right? One is that there are some longstanding relationships. Um, you you br you bring up the Federalist Society. There are some long years long relationships that these justices have with people that it's not necessarily organic. It's by design to connect with other um, conservative, sometimes big donors, like-minded people, people who may eventually end up on the Supreme Court. But the other big thing is when it comes to ethical standards, it is up to the interpretation of the individual court justice. And there's no check for on them. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. I mean, for recusal, for instance, I mean, there is a very high standard in the law for when a judge has to recuse themselves, um, but it's very subjective. And, you know, in the lower courts, if a justice doesn't, if a judge doesn't recuse themselves, that can be appealed. But with the Supreme Court, that's not how it works. There's no, there's no one that justices have to ask. There's no policy that mm -hmm. uh, at least the public's aware of, and their decisions are final. Yeah, I mean, people it, should read the article. It, it's an incredible it, piece of reporting. Uh, Joshua and Justin, mm -hmm. uh, your partner who wrote this with you, you guys uh, did incredible work here. And it's just interesting to note that Justice Alito also points out that, uh, in addition to the unoccupied seat on the private jet, as Joshua just uh, indicated, that he didn't really know Singer. So yeah. you go on like luxury trips with people you don't know. Well, if you're getting um, it for free, you just might. But I think it, it speaks to just how complicated these. Um, background relationships are. But also who's admitting a friend, who's not a friend. in his op-ed that yeah. he doesn't uh, pay attention to a lot of the cases that come before the Supreme Court as if that is some kind of a rebuttal. Uh, yeah, Josh Kaplan, incredible reporting. Thank you very much.